Caffeine and Coils, and I'm Deanna. And I'm Jenny. Jenny, uh, do you have something you wanted to tell us about preseason? I do. All right. Y'all don't forget, preseason ends November 22nd, 2023, depending on when you're listening to this. Um, So get your orders in because you're getting points and extended terms if you spend $2,000 or more. (laughs) Okay. Um, So have you watched anything good lately? Um, okay, so we watched that show, The Fall of the House of Usher, on Netflix, and it was really good. The ending was, okay, the ending was like, hmm. I mean, it wasn't like riveting. Like, the show itself was riveting, Mm -hmm. but the ending just was like very open, like inconclusive, if you will. You kind of had to like make your own conclusion, which sometimes it's good I was wanting a little bit more but it was still really a really good show um do not recommend watching with your kids though (laughs) a little on the scary side so but it was really good yeah I wanted to try that new show The Shining Veil with Courtney Cox I haven't even heard of that it looks really good yeah yeah what's been your like spooky season favorite show or or no um I haven't really watched anything real that's spooky. I've watched, like, documentaries and stuff. Um, there's this one called, um, I think it's called Missing or Murdered or something like that on Netflix. It's kind of like First 48, but it's um, it kind of follows missing cases. Oh, okay. Or it's called Missing Dead or Alive. That's what it's called. Okay, I'm going to have and to look that up. So they find some of the people and some of them are alive. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's great. Yeah, I know. I mean, hopefully. So <laughs> hopefully they're not traumatized forever, but I mean, at least no, at least they're not it, dead. It's really good. So I recommend it because it's, it's kind of like you don't really know what's, what the outcome is going to be. Interesting. Yeah. All right. You're going to have to look up Fall of the House of Usher and okay. see if you like it. All right. Um, so the hot topic today is we're going to talk about emerging trends in the HVAC world. Oh, we got lots of new things coming, we so this ought to be fun. <laughs> um, so I reached out to some of our tech service managers, and they helped me with some of these emerging trends, one of them being something called IntelliSense. So what it is is it is um, sensors and the equipment that collect data for the technician, the data that it collects is things such as for outdoor liquid line pressure and temperature, suction line pressure and temperature, and outdoor air temp. And then for indoor um, data, it collects blower motor RPM, supply and return air temperature, and fault codes when available. Also, this links up with the Ecobee 24 volt thermostat, which tells them the temperature, the set point, and the mode. So this is really great because this is all information that the technician can have before they even go to the home. So they can look at this before they arrive. Right. This isn't something that they have to be there and look up on their phone or or computer or whatever. They can see this, like, remotely? Yes. So all the data is communicated over a 24-volt wire. It goes to the cloud. And then the technician can enter their unique contractor PIN and in, into the HVAC Partners portal and access the uh, information on the app so they can know before they go. That's kind of the little tagline okay. that goes with it. It's remote service diagnostics in real time. So this would be really helpful because you would know what um, tools or what um, different parts you might need to bring to the job before you actually get there that's amazing so all of this is just right in their system and i'm assuming all this data transfer happens from the wi-fi connection on the thermostat yes that's part of it okay nice nice so the important thing here for our customers is to know that this is available and to access it you have to have an hvac partners in that's right okay um, so also, a new thing that's coming out are um, NFC furnaces. So what this is, it's it's a furnace that can be programmed on the app, and then it uses the NFC chip on your phone 
So you just okay. tap your phone to the furnace and it collects all of those settings that you managed on the app as opposed to the old way of using dip switches. Oh, interesting. Okay, so I've actually seen this in a couple of the classes that I've sat through. I've seen this and you're right. It's like a lot like Apple Pay. Right. So I think it there's a couple key things that I picked up from these classes that wherever the NFC chip is in your specific model of phone, so it can vary from Android to Apple, mm-hmm. all that stuff. So you kind of have to like, sometimes it's not foolproof. You kind of have right. to lay it there and figure out exactly what the best case is. Um, and then the app, the Carrier or Bryant Service Technician app is like, you can't do, you got to have that app and you got to have a login and stuff. So those are two things. And we can link the app um, for the Google Play Store or the Apple um, app store in the description for this for, so you guys can find it easily but um, yeah that's just like that's great technology I'm like so excited that we're coming into the <laughs> into I know, it like <laughs> almost kind of late but I'm glad that this kind of technology is becoming available because I think it would be really convenient it'd be a time saver um, and just imagine your toolbox now includes your phone and not know, just yeah. like the actual physical tools. I think it's so cool that we can program all that stuff without, I mean, you can program so much and you can see so much without even hooking up to the unit. That's, I know. that's pretty cool. That's, that's definitely a huge jump in our industry. I think technology so wise. So also um, just kind of in general, in regard to emerging trends, staying on top of emerging technology. So some people are really resistant to change. They're really resistant to new technology. But it's really important to stay on top of the trends anyway because you need to be knowledgeable about these things because the the technology is changing every day, it feels like. It's so fast. So if you don't stay with the times, you're going to get left behind, you know, in a couple years when there's something even newer out. And just think about, like, as a service technician. Yeah knowing how to do all this stuff and it just makes you so valuable especially too I mean it this as a contractor as an as a dealer owner I mm-hmm. mean this makes you super valuable because it makes you that much more efficient if you can log in to your partner's account and kind of check in on all your regular customers say you just have them on PM contracts and you've got all of them kind of listed as your favorites and just check in on them I mean, think about, you can literally say, hey, we noticed something's going wrong. Something's up with your unit. Let us come out and take a look. And you could already have the parts on the truck to get them fixed or even like basically prevent it from going down in the first place. Right. That's pretty cool. I also, I think it's of course important to still have the knowledge of measuring the temperatures and everything yourself, like using your gauges, that's still obviously a very important skill to have. So I don't think people should lean too much on technology, but having this, you know, information readily available for you is going to be really helpful. It's almost like a double check though. Like, you know what I mean? You can see what the app says and then pull out your other tools and do it the good old fashioned way too, if you want just to double check. But also I think that this will kind of take some of the mysterious vibes of like not knowing especially for newer technicians yeah I mean to kind of eliminate some of that things being so technical yeah I think it'll help get more people into the trades if there's more technology and they can trust it and lean into it I think it'll help and just having that information before you you get to the location it's just gonna give you a little bit of peace of mind knowing kind of what you're getting into instead of showing up completely blind and not knowing anything at all about what's going on with the unit. Yeah, especially if the homeowner's not home. So the next tip they said was to make sure that you have the right tools, and um, this is for charging units with refrigerant. So you have to have scales. Apparently with the old uh, refrigerant, you could maybe do a little bit of guessing or it's just about right eyeballing it kind of thing but with the new r 54 b you're going to have to know the exact charge and you're not going to be able to get it charged right without scales 
So you're going to need also to record the A2L refrigerant total system charge as well. So it's really important for you to actually have those measurements. So you need to make sure you have the right tools for the job. And um, don't wait until you need them because then you're going to look unprepared. So yeah. you need to have the right tools before you get to a, the job or else it's going to make you look like a fool. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good advice. Yes. I think that, yeah, that's really good advice. The A2L tools, I think um, there's several that are out already. I know that there's been a lot of talk about left-handed threading and different things like that. So it's definitely something that we're all going to have to learn more about and make sure we know before that time comes and get the right tools. <laughs> right. Okay, so for our ender today, we have our special guest, Cody, who's going to ask us some um, super hard trivia questions. Absolutely. <laughs> Are you guys, you guys ready? I'm ready. All right. I have Google cool. open. <laughs> uh, not allowed. Banned. <laughs> Disqualified. No worries. All right. Question number one. What is the difference between a heat pump and an air conditioner? Okay, I kind of know this one. So a heat pump to cool runs the refrigerant one way and to heat runs it the opposite direction. You got it. It reverses the cycle. Yes. That's as far as my knowledge goes. Dan, I want to phone a friend here. That's, that's the main difference. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, pretty that's much it. The okay. okay. Um, Perfect. ACs, <laughs> normal ACs can only cool. Okay, gotcha. Heat gotcha. pumps have the ability better, to yeah. do both. By reversing the refrigerant cycle, okay. so you got it. All right, true or false, there is no such thing as cool air. That's true. True, yeah, true. That is true. Cool air is just the removal of heat from the space. Look, we got this. You guys are, you guys are rolling. <laughs> All right, so what does MERV refer to? Not what does it stand for, what is a MERV rating? Isn't it something to do with the size of the filter, like the holes in the filter, how much it lets in and out? Yes, so in other words, that would be a measure of? Air filtration. Starts, starts with an E. Efficiency. There you go, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was lost on that one. The higher the MERV rating, the more efficient the filter, okay. the more okay. detritus it can take out of the air. All right, what does HEPA stand for? So this is the acronym. Oh, yeah. Um, high efficiency? No, I don't know. Yeah, high efficiency. High. Something air. You got it. You got three out of four. High efficiency. Protocol. Nope. Purification. Nope. What's in the air that gets filtered? Particle. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Particulate. There it is. High, high. efficiency particulate air. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. I, you know, I've like never known. Did we do that in the acronym episode? I can't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember that one. I got another acronym for you, but I think you guys know this one. What does SEER stand for? Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio. You got it. That's it. <laughs> I always want to say rating, but that's not right. I was thinking rating too. Yeah. All right, just a few more here. What's a common name for an outdoor unit besides AC or heat pump? Oh, com condenser? Um, yeah, that's it. Condenser. That's it. I was it. thinking compressor. The compressor is <laughs> I think compressor's condenses. inside of it. <laughs> yeah. A compressor condenses, so you're on the right track. Um, what is a load calculation? So if a tech comes out to your house and performs a load calculation, what are they doing? They're like measuring what size unit you need, isn't that? I don't know, like the they're measuring the right something right along track. those lines. I can't remember. So specifically, <laughs> they're measuring the exact amount of BTUs a space requires for sufficient heating and cooling. Oh, okay, yes, of course. so. That was on the tip of my tongue. Of course, right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you basically, I'm going to give it to you. You, you pretty I much mean, had it. I mean, it's like they're, they're measuring to determine I mean, what tonnage you would need exactly. and all that stuff. Exactly. So. All right. And last question for today. What is another common name for an air handler? Fan coil. Yep. That's oh, it. good job. Okay. That one I was drawing. You got blank it. On. You got it. <laughs> you guys did pretty good. 
Okay. Yay, we're learning stuff. We are. <laughs> Slowly but surely. We're getting smarticle particles. Okay, everybody. Uh, until next time, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe.